Uh, I have to apologize. The food is going to be late again. It's not my doing. I complained, but whatever. Uh, we have a major innovation. Uh, Michael was able to transmogrify the magic spoon. Now it looks like so. So that's how it looks now. It's a much because it's the same thing. It was just they used the special powers which IT people have to, <coughs> to transform this small spoon into a very large spoon. Oh, our visual friends are with us. Minus Sunil, who is still in India. Is he still in India? He's still in India. Okay. So that's how the spoon looks now. Like they changed it. They, they, you missed the story. So in any case, so whomever gets the spoon, you know the rules. Fortunately, we will start with a little bit of just talking. I, I do assume that most of you finished min max procedure, which we were writing. Okay? If you didn't try to do it, it's good for you. And I know that it doesn't take, like, Ryan timed himself. He was able to finish it under three minutes. So, well, okay, Ryan is very good. So you could finish it in 30 minutes. But we're not talking about hours. We're talking about a fairly short, short time. So try to finish it. So now let us attack the problem which uh, I mentioned before, and that's why I have been hitting for, for a while the problem of finding not just uh, smallest, not just smallest of n elements, but smallest and second smallest. Uh, the problem has a very distinguished pedigree. Uh, it was first addressed by a known uh, British mathematician, C.L. Dodgson. Anybody heard of him? <laughs> now, somebody heard, yeah, Lewis Carroll. Exactly right. And if you haven't heard of Lewis Carroll, you should. Okay, that's a very important book which he wrote, not the, not the mathematical book, but the book called Alice in Wonderland. So if you haven't read it, do. No person should be hired ever unless he read Ellis in Wonderland. But in any case, he was also a mathematician uh, at Oxford. And he also dabbled in all kind of games. Apparently, he invented Scrabble and a bunch of other sort of games. And uh, at some point, he decided that there is a clear problem with tennis tournaments. He observed that with very high probability, if you have, say, tournament with 64 players, the guy who gets the second prize is actually not the second strongest. Right? Because, for example, you know, he observed that, you know, st st strongest and second strongest could be paired in the first round. Therefore, the second strongest guy gets eliminated, doesn't get the second prize, in spite of his prowess. You see my point? So this is why now they use a technique known as seeding to assure that people sort of move to different parts of the tree. But again, he wanted to come up with an algorithm which assures that the second guy is truly the second guy. And he published it. That was in 1882. And uh, the algorithm wasn't quite an algorithm. And it was clearly not optimal. It took 50 more years before uh, the problem was stated correctly. Which is, people realized that you could talk about minimum number of comparisons, but it took 
literally another 30 years till 1964, when a Russian mathematician, Sergei Sergeyevich Kislitsyn, published a paper which sort of proved that there is an optimal algorithm, described it, and sort of finished it. By the way, all of this information is freely available if you want to know in a book called Art of Computer Programming by Donald Knuth. And here I want to say, I had this conversation with some of you even yesterday, you really should buy it if you don't have it. Right? It's a certain, make certain commitment. You spend $150 saying that you really care about programming. Right? And this is not a book which is useful, meaning it's not like a book on uh, programming in Python for idiots or <laughs> Uh, you know, information retrieval uh, for 21st century or something like that. This is one of the fundamental books which you buy and you then spend on your lifetime getting the information out of it. Sort of getting beautiful things which you then could use for programming in Python or uh, information retrieval or other things. So I just want to, I'm going to be mentioning Knuth throughout the course. Uh, it's not a perfect book. It is just the greatest book we got. So, uh, you know, it requires sort of reading it. It's not, people say, oh, it's a very good uh, uh, reference book. No, it's, it's not a very good reference book because uh, you have to basically do linear search through, right, uh, to find what you're interested in. Uh, another important thing, do not spend too much time solving problems. Read the solutions. They're at the end. They're sort of very important. Lots of very important algorithms are described in the solutions to his problems. But again, it has to become a lifelong activity, reading Knuth. So the, uh, the problem of which we are talking about is described in the third volume of Knuth in the section on order selection, but somehow he does not implement it. He describes it fully, but doesn't implement it. Uh, not just a mix, but not even as an algorithm. Because as we shall see, it's actually a little tricky. So uh, he often does that. He sort of implements things very carefully in mix when he likes it, but when he doesn't like it, he just waves his hands and says it's very, very simple. So let us see what the idea is. Should I pass this point and start interrogating? The last person with the spoon is no longer with us. I guess he died. Uh, Paul, give it to someone. I don't want to know who gets it. Okay. Okay. So, uh, have you thought about this problem? Yes. So, do you know how many comparisons do you need to do? Uh, same as the min-max problem. Mm -mm. I mean, you can if you like, but you could do much fewer. Fewer. Or, I mean, yes. I'm asking worst case, I'm asking how many comparisons you absolutely need to do. And it's much fewer. Okay? Let us try to use some logic. Now I'm going to start asking questions. So what do we know? How many comparisons do we need to find the winner of the tournament? I mean the smallest guy. Ten. Well, we know better than that. N minus 1. Yes, I agree with that. You remember why, right? So uh, we could even sketch a proof why we need to find the winner if we want to find the second place guy. There is 
That is, there is no way we could find the second place guy unless we know the winner. Could you, could you summarize? Uh, without knowing that there's someone above them, you could, you can figure out if they're the second person. Well, let us assume that there are possibly two other guys who could be winners, at least. Because it's either one or, right? If there is none, obviously, he's not the second place guy. If there are one, that's what we want to prove. If there are two, why there couldn't be two? Because then, obviously, he will not be the second place because, you know, there are two potential guys who are greater, greater than him. So we know that we need to find, in order to find the second place guy, we need to find the first place guy. We agree with that. Therefore, we need to do somehow at least n minus 1 comparison. And then comes the following idea. What do we know about second place guy? About his, we don't know which games he won, but what do we know about the games he lost? He could have only lost the one. To whom? To the winner. That is, we know very important property that the second place guy is the guy who lost to the winner. And you say, so what does it get us? Oh, but that's the crucial thing for understanding why you don't need to do too many comparisons. Because now we say that if the winner remembers all the games he won, Somehow, he writes them on a piece of paper. Right? Then, after he wins the tournament, what do we have to do? Find the winner of the subset. How big is this subset? Yeah, at most, n minus 1, but. At most, yeah, but you know, that's not. Uh, n over 2. Oh, sorry, yeah, log n. Well, I wish, let's keep guessing till we get to the right number. It's log, it has to be something about log. Anybody who knows about tennis, by the way, should realize that it is somehow about log. If you take Wimbledon, and they have, what, 64 players who are admitted? Currently, right? So, you know. The winner doesn't play 63 games, right? Because they structure it as a binary tree. And this tree is how deep, if you have n elements, how deep is the tree? It's not quite, it's not quite, not quite, not quite. Uh, well, there's something about. Floors and ceilings, guys. <laughs> ceiling of, right? It's ceiling of what? Log base 2 of n. Log base 2 of n, right? So that's the number of levels. So, so we could somehow arrange our tournament that the winner will defeat how many people? Ceiling, log. Two of n. Minus one. Minus one. Because right. at the top there's just the single element. No, no, no. Not my sorry. Not minus one. No. Log ceiling of log two of n. Yes, my sincere apologies. But how many now, this correct question, to which the answer will be the answer I want, how many extra games do you need to find out the best out of them? Gotcha. Yeah. Log base 2 of n minus 1. Right. So now we come up with a 
thing which seems to be a realistic bound in class ceiling of log base 2 of n minus 2. Right? 1 is the first pass to get the champion, and 1 for getting the second place thing. So that is the number which we are trying to get. Yes? OK. Pass the spoon. Nothing I could do. Uh, whomever gets it, gets it. How could we do it? Apparently, we need to build the history of comparison. We need to do what? Uh, so when, when we compare, we have to remember, uh, like, uh, the have a structure where we remember the, uh, who we compare with. We need to remember history. But first of all, let me even ignore that part. Let's not even bother about remembering history. You see, what we need to learn to do first is to play the tournament not in this way. Remember how we were finding the mean or the max? We were doing this. We were playing one against the other, against another, against another, against another, against the other, against the other, n minus one times. Yes? That's not a good plan. We couldn't just take our old loop and keep the history, because then the winner is going to have n minus 1 matches he won, right? Everybody agree? And we will have to, you know, we go through all the trouble keeping the history, but then we still have to do another n minus 2 comparisons. So we need somehow to transform that into the way they play tennis. Right? How can we do that? Let's ignore the history. Let's just let's just concentrate on on this. We can do like we do some some idea from sorting. Like we can divide the set on two parts and play <coughs> play first round would be to play each member from say left side with the left with the right one? We could do that. That's not bad. What about the, the problem there, of course, that first of all, we could do it recursively, but then you know it will become sort of slow. Could we do it iteratively? Yes, we can try to, we can start from two ends and move toward. Why do we need to start from two ends? Um, it might be easier to organize whether, or you can, you can, or you can go by two, like from the beginning, or right? take. Yes, this is a correct idea. We have to go by two. And that sort of the first thing for, for years that I thought was the correct solution would be not for years, for some time. I thought the correct solution would do first, second, third, fourth, and so on, store them. What's the problem with this solution? You have to take care of what is the numbers first. No, nah, it's not hard. It's not hard. You take two, and then you get smaller and smaller and smaller. Sequence then it becomes one element. There is a problem. There's always a problem. Lots of memory use. We need lots of memory to save the intermediate result. All right? And let us now, another aside, uh, what, you know, what do we mean when we say lots of memory? This is, yes, so order n is bad. 
And that is sort of thing. What about square root? It's actually also pretty bad. So long time ago, people thought that we will say an algorithm is good, or they will say in place doesn't require extra memory, if it uses constant memory. That would be really nice. But then they said, well, it doesn't quite work, because our favorite algorithm, what was their favorite algorithm? The most important algorithm in the world, quicksort. Right? So quicksort is not going to be in place, because it's recursive. And since it's recursive, it requires how much memory? Log n. No, it does not need n log n. It needs log n. It splits roughly in the middle, uh, let's assume, on the average. So it needs log n. So people said log n is good, and it's still in place. They started to allow logarithmic memory. And then people said, well, but what if we have sort of nested things like that? So in, in reality, you have log square. Is log square all right or not? What do you think? They said it's all right, because the log is really very small. You see, you might know it from mathematics, but log is never greater than 64. Well, it could be greater, but not in our universe, right? So log is very small. So people said squaring it is all right, too. And then you know how theoreticians are. They said it's really all right if we have polylogarithmic storage. Basically, what they said is that as long as the memory requirement is O of some polynomial of log, it's all right. So that's, that's what they say. A polynomial tends never to get bigger than square. But you know, let's go with theoreticians and say that polylogarithmic storage is good. Right? So what we are looking for is that kind of storage. How could we get it? Any idea? So that we want to not to keep these guys all together. Do we really need to keep? I mean, let's think about it. If we compute these two guys, do we need to compute this guy? Or are we ready to go up? We are ready to go up. There is no point to store these two guys. If they're ready, so our goal is to basically to become eager. That is, whenever guys are ready to be paired, we want to pair them. Right? And if we do eager things somehow, still do not know how, uh, we will get to what, how much extra storage? If you think about it, you never need to store more than log n things. Because the moment people are ready, you, you could pair them up. So you could have you know, one of these stored, one of these stored. But you will never keep two guys of the same power, where powers define how many games they want, stored. The parity will be always different. So this is a very important idea. So basically, you need two, right? I mean, two to traverse. You need at least two. Oh, you need not just well. We'll figure out. Pass the spoon. Okay. <laughs> you missed. It is a spoon. Our IT people change the spoon magically into this electronic device. Oh, wow. so modern, the modern spoon. Yes, a modern spoon. Uh, so 
let us see if we could come up with a way of writing. And here, what, what basically we need to realize that suddenly we see something which has nothing to do with our problem. The first foundation for our algorithm is the ability to take a tree like that, leftmost, you know, sort of leftmost tree, and transform it into a balanced tree. By the way, what does allow us to do this transformation? Is there some reason we could do it? Oh, oh, well, build some internal nodes. No, 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 but why could we take this kind of computation and convert it to this kind of computation? When can we do this transformation? Oh, uh, if it has uh, associativities. Very good. You see, what this is the central intuition here, that as long as our operation is associative, we could change this kind of tree. I call them reduction trees, because we reduce to this kind of reduction tree. Right? Observe what we do not need, which property don't we need. What property do we need? Commutativity. We never change the order. We keep them, the combination, in the same order. We just rebalance the parentheses. Right? And it's actually important for our problem, because if you think about it, our min is not quite commutative. Uh, mathematicians' min is commutative, but ours is not quite. Why not? Because you want to keep stable. Because we want to keep stable. We distinguish between the left and right argument. But it is associative. Therefore, we could do this transformation. Right? And here we come to this amazing idea of how to do this transformation. This, this is one of the most beautiful ideas which they kept secret from you. They have, should have taught it in the introductory programming class in high school. But you know, they want, because they want to publish papers themselves and not tell you a general mechanism. So let us see why we could do it. What's the algorithm for doing it? The algorithm is actually, I could Socratically derive it, but I, I will cheat. I'll just tell you a little bit. You see, let us assume that we, we have these elements which we are somehow combining with mean, with plus, with merge, with any other associative operation. What we could do, we could create a counter. And in every bit of this counter, we're going to keep something. And it's going to be like a binary counter with, uh, I'm going to write it from left to right. So this is bit number one. This is bit number two. This is bit number say, uh, let's make it 32. We will see that it seldom gets beyond 32. Because what are we going to keep here? Here we're going to keep things singletons. Here we're going to pe keep guys who won or had one victory. Here. We're going to keep guys who had two victories. Here we're going to, do I have to continue? So the idea is that we, as long as we use this structure, we are never going to combine things of different parities. We will never combine things sort of unless they are of the same weight. Right? 
And why, by the way, why did I limit it with 32? Anybody know? Well, uh, practically, so you, you you never have that uh, 2 to 32 number. Of yeah. No, no. This is going to be the next one is going to be 2 to the 33. But we're actually in our code, we will make this a parameter, a template parameter, whether it's 32 or not. It's easy. But in reality, it's not going to be too big because, you know, doubling is a, it goes very, very fast. So this is a wonderful device. And we could use it everywhere when we need to transform the leftmost reduction to the balanced reduction. One thing, we have to start writing code. Oh, that's not my expertise. But yeah, it is your expert. Come on. You're a crack programmer. Is it one global counter or one for all the manipulations? It's one for our computation. Okay. How do you describe that I use two one four in this direction? Because we never promote, let us, let us look. Okay, let us look at the algorithm which we're going to write. The algorithm which we'll, add, we'll call this guy a counter, and we'll have an algorithm add to counter. We take something and add to counter. Right? And you typically, you take a guy who never played any games or was never combined with any. You go, 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 come here, and you look here in the first bit. And then you say, does it have anyone? Is it zero or not? Let's assume it's zero. It's either zero or not. Do you agree with that? So if it's zero, what do we do? We just stick it there. It's not going to play any games. It's just going to go into this thing and live there for a while. Now, let's assume that it's not zero. Then what are we going to do? We're going to take the new guy who played no games at all, take this guy who played no games at all. Do you agree with that? That's how he ended up here. And we combine him. And do what? Carry propagate. It is a binary counter. Remember carry propagate thing. We do exactly. So we go to the second bit. What do we do? Is there zero in there? If it's zero, what do we do? Just stick it there. If it's not zero, we have somebody in there who already won one game. Okay, let's make one more step. So we come <laughs> to position three. Right? And what do we do? We look there, we ask the question. Which question? Is it zero? It's the same question. If it's zero, we stick it there. If not, we take our combining operation, whatever it is, combine them, and keep going. I mean, you know, it's a carry propagate. If if you see what I mean. It's it's really what that's what it does. Now, of course, before we put Ranping on the spot, right, and curve, let's figure out what happens if we reach this guy. Well, th that would be the winner. Well, let's assume that. Now, and let's assume there's somebody there. That's called an overflow. <laughs> there could be an overflow. I mean, this is exact analogy of what we do with Integers, right? except they are no longer integers. This is no longer really zero and one. Well, it could be zero and one, but it could be some other thing which is combined with an associative operation. Right? So when we get here, let us come with a very simple solution. We don't really know what to do, right? We don't, and not at present, because maybe we could grow this thing. Maybe we could. We don't know. 
We don't know how to proceed. When you don't know, do something sensible and let whomever uses it figure out. What is a sensible thing to do? Three exception. No, that's it. <laughs> that's okay. Here we see the difference between. Okay, I'm not going to say. I mean, you know, he's affected by years of Java programming. No, you do not say exception. It's a good thing. We just reach the end. So what should we return? Exactly, return the carry. You have something in your hand. You don't know what to return. Return what you have in your hand. So the question is now, what do you return after you stick the guy in? Because there are two possibilities. You either stuck it someplace, which you usually do, or you ran to the end and there is no place to stick it in, you have to carry it further. So you return the carry or zero. We have zero to return. So the guy who called us could easily know whether it was stuck or whether it was returned. And he will figure out, as we shall see, whether to extend it somehow or whatever. It's his business, not ours, for enough. Do you think we could do it? I don't know what we're putting in these boxes. I actually don't want to know at this point what we put in these boxes. I claim it doesn't matter what we put in these boxes. It's some stuff, and it's some stuff we usually call it what? C. We call it C. Some C. It has to be some type. You agree it has to be some type. Everything has to be some type. Right? So what we know is that there is some type T which lives in these guys. There is some, what else do we need? Combining operation. You need to, to know how to combine it. And we don't want to know at present. You see, let us be lazy. The great success in programming comes because there are lazy people. You say, I don't want to know now. I'll find out later. I'm just solving this thing. We are right now solving the problem. We have an associated binary iteration of some kind working on some kind type C. And instead of doing combination in the leftmost reduction, we want to do this balanced thing. And what we discovered that if we have this counter, it will work for us. We could keep adding. Observe the nice property of this count. I have to sit down. I'm an old man. Uh, the, the nice thing about the count, which we don't need to know how many things we put in the count. We're just co putting out. Know, if we make count big enough, or if it's extensible, we could just put them one by one, one by one, one by one. Right? So they could come up as a stream. Because everybody says, oh, we need to know how many things we are. No, we don't. Here we could just keep running. Right? And it will balance things. It will never, the property of this device, it always adds up only things which are of the same strength. Do, do you see that? That's the key, key thing. Now we have to go write the code. OK. Ryan, write the code. I mean, Ron Ping is going to say, and you're going to write. It has to be a file. Foo.h is not good. So let us call it binary counter.h. We have to start someplace. We don't have to. Right? So observe that we, we are not even thinking right now about finding, OK, maybe, maybe it's not fair to you guys. Maybe I should sketch the plan of the whole algorithm. But the plan of the whole algorithm is very simple. I mean, first, we learn how to do things 
in a balanced way, yes? Then we realize that when we play these matches, we have to keep history. So, but the, the counter doesn't need to know about that. It's the guys themselves have to keep records. So everybody has to keep record of all the games he won up till now. How many records do we need when we do this? What's the upper bound on the amount of records guys have to write down? How many guys are going to be here? How many? Zero. Huh? How many guys are going to be here? One. How many guys are going to be here? That's two. Three. All the way up to 32. So, well, it's one up to the 32. It's roughly 32 square over 2. Well, it's 32 times 31 over 2. Right? That's Gauss proved when he was eight years old. Uh, so, when we, when we get it, so in other words, what's the memory requirement? The square of the log. Square of the log. You see, so I'm just showing you that, you know, we, we are good if we could do that. If we could come up with an operation, of course, there are another thing which somebody who goes ahead and thinks about it, we need to take care of. Uh, you see, when we're exhausted, they might not all be reduced to one guy. There might be several guys left. So we need to run one more pass. Right? Remember, I mean, the, the first we do just powers of 2, and then we combine remaining powers of 2. But it's again, it's, it's all right. Right? Yes? Yes, but yes, that's the goal. But we could do a million other things. That's the whole point. We're trying to find what is the underlying algorithmic primitive. Because what we observed, OK, let me, this is very good. By the way, guys, this is an example you, all of you should follow. If you are lost, ask. Right? So let, let me repeat our sort of grand plan. Sort of the grand plan, we observed that you know, when we were looking for minimum before, we were comparing first with second, then the result with third, then with fourth. So what could happen is that the guy who wins plays n minus 1 matches, right? Well, not necessarily. Not necessarily, but it's possible. It's possible. And with relatively high probability, he's going to be at least n over 2, right? So we will need additional bunch of matches on top of n minus 1, we'll have to do potentially another n minus 2 matches, the worst case. Do you agree? To find the second place. Because after we find the winner, after n minus, we know we have to do n minus 1 to find the winner. Right? But after we found the winner, anybody who lost to him would be the second place guy. So we have to assure that the winner doesn't win n minus 1 matches himself. It would be terrible for us. Do you agree with that? And we do it by constructing, instead of doing leftmost reduction, by constructing binary. And how we do it, we come up with this amazing device which allows us for any associative operation. OK. Wait,
Exactly. It's, it's that level. What? Right? K. But it goes up to the log. Right? And we never combine people in this device unless they won the same number of games. Right? But observe that it, okay, there is another problem. Some of you guys, I'm sure visual guys, deal with a sort of numerical analysis problem where if you do summation, you don't really want to add small quantities to big quantities. Because the errors, I mean, you know, s g bad things happen. Because, you know, if this thing gets out of whack and you add a small thing, the small thing is ignored. You know, this is how floating point works. So you could use exactly the same device for balancing your addition of doubles. Or if you want to implement merge sort. It's exactly the same device. Merge is associative. Okay? When we become grown-ups, we get to advanced data structure called, say, binomial forests. Anybody know binomial forests? Okay. You will know about binomial forests. And binomial forests, what are they? They are the same idea. You will have some kind of data structure living in this counter, in this binary register. And you will avoid combining them unless they are of the same weight. It's a general algorithmic technique. That's what I'm trying. Yes? When we combine two of these units, we get back a single unit. We get single unit of double the size or plus one more. No, we don't need, we need, we always come, we're eager. We combine the, you see, we store one guy of who, we, who won no games. We store one guy who won one game. So we store one guy who, at most one guy. We store, two, we either have such guy or not, right? So basically what it is, what we do, if we have a binary tree, people at the back probably cannot see it, but I'm drawing a binary tree. What, what we do, we sort of traverse it. We, we construct it, but we traverse, traverse it like that. We do this, 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 this. If, if you see what we, we do not, we do not store the entire back uh, bottom row, right? We store one element per row, and we have log n rows. And that assures balancing. And balancing is good for multiple reasons. You know, one of the reasons, for example, if you do merge sort, but you merge things in the leftmost reduction, you will get a quadratic algorithm. You have to balance. You should never merge things unless if, if people give you n lists to merge, you should assure that you merge them, roughly speaking, lists of the same length. All right? Otherwise, bad things happen. Check your code. You've probably done it too. Uh, I mean, merge appears in search. Uh, according to what Brian tells me, he is our chief expert in search. Uh, intersection and merge are sort of identical. Whatever. It's, we will get to it. Uh, you might see it better if we start writing the code, the code. Want to <laughs> okay uh, let's see uh, <laughs> uh, first we I think we need to define a data structure called no we don't never be lazy 
what is the minimal requirement? I claim the minimal requirement is that you have two guys. Come on, you know what I'm going to say. What is God? I mean, you know, people know that I requested that on my tombstone they will engrave while first not equal last. Right, so because I claim that all code is reducible to that. Okay, oh, uh, sure. L l let's define function, template function. Let's see. Is ah, he got so. We we'll always define template because there's nothing in the world which is not a template. <laughs> Type name T. Uh, what's it called? Do we need type name T? Yeah, why not? But I won't start with T. But let us let us let us work on on that. As what else do we need? So T is the guy who lives here. Yes, these are T's. But you don't really need just T. You need uh, probably is an iterator of T. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, how would you say it? Um, type name iterator angle bracket. Uh, I would just you know let us let us let us cheat guys. Let's just say type name I. And then we'll explain what I is. Okay. Yeah. And what else do we need? Um. Then we need to. It's not compare, guys. No, it is not a compare. We need to retain a pair. Right? No, with what we need another thing. A combining, yes, a function which is going to be used for combining things. Right. Kind of. Then comma combiner. I would call it B, and then I would explain that it's actually binary operation. Okay. Or uh. well, actually, let's call it op. I think it's much clearer if we call it op since I. So. Uh, okay. We require. The type T is associative. Uh, no, we do not require the type T is associative. Uh, the, the operation o over T is op associative. Right. So you said two things. You might not have noticed it. I mean, you said that operation is a binary operation on T. That's that's a requirement. I have to say that. OP is in binary operations over T. Huh? And uh, OP is uh, associative. Huh? Everybody understands what it means? Oh, binary iteration is something which takes two things of the same type and hopefully returns the thing of the same type. Let me peek. No. No sign. And it's pizza today, guys. So lucky day. You can. I mean, w associativity doesn't even mention type. No, operation mentions associativity. It's a associativity is a statement about operation. He is asking, they don't want to know. No, no, no. no. And I didn't make it quite good. I know. OK, next decision we need to make is uh, what we want to retain. No, we know what we want to return. We agreed. 
We had a long discussion and agreed. No, we didn't return a pair. No, we did not return a pair. I absolutely refused to believe that we agreed to return a pair because I remember what we agreed. What do we return if we stick it here? What do we return? An element. No, we do not return an element. We return very particular value. No, we do not return. Okay? Just what? We return T, but which T? The, the T with the uh, winning that number of. No. No, we don't. No, we don't. We have a discussion. We agreed. It was. It's all on tape, guys. If you don't believe me, watch it. It's there. Who said zero? Zero. Well, that's what we agreed. That if we return something, we return the carry which went all the way past. And if we stick it someplace, we return zero. That's how the caller knows whether it is someplace or not. We're not telling the, the guy where we stuck it. It's none of his business. It's just none of his business. That's what we decide. OK. So what do we return? Integer. Int. No, we don't return int. We return t. Yeah, Nick was right saying t. He was not right not saying which specific t we return it this case yeah so yes we will return t okay so either now or not not now okay yes or the carry the very big t t could be zero but zero is a very special thing zero it's the thing which indicates that this guy is empty Yes, but we will use zeros there. The problem with integer, it's fine. It's when it's not integer we have to take care, as you shall see. It's a marker that it's empty, that this bit is empty. Nobody lives there. Remember in the algorithm, what do we do? We come to this bit, what do we check? Is it empty or not? Is the guy there zero or not? And if it's zero, we store it there. You will have this, but for zero, imagine that it's actually plus. That's a very good thing to imagine. We'll see how to deal with min for integers. It will work when we're done. But for the, in the meanwhile, when you think about integers, think plus. And then you're going to have 0 is going to be 0. But for an arbitrary t, it's something which is a value which, it, which we use to designate that this bit is empty. For example, it's an empty list. Or what would we use for our mean and max? Anybody could guess. It uh, would be an, uh, uh, now uh, empty iterator. No, there's no such thing. Somebody answered the question. Say it loudly. Last. last. Because we know that last is going to point to Sort of, remember that's what we return when the sequence is empty itself, when we look for, for min. I? Maybe we should, but it doesn't help. Right? Let me explain why it doesn't help. Because then the carry will disappear. I really, I mean, okay, let me explain how you usually use this machine. Every machine needs to be viewed from the point of view how you're going to use it. 
you're going to take things one by one and throw them in. Okay? When it returns something like non-zero, you need to extend the machine, put an extra bit here, and stick the guy returned. Right? And then keep throwing things in. No, 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 but it's, it's, it's a binary except yes means something. Yeah. The solution of a sub-problem of this size. You see here we put a solution of a problem of size one, solution of the problem of size two. Actually, in the i bit we put a solution of the problem of the size two to the i. Hard. There's no pizza. What? Yeah, we should write it. Yes, I agree. That's what I'm. Um, okay, let's go try. There's one more line. There's one. There should be a requirement on I. <coughs> so I is a well, forward iterator. I is a forward iterator. With value type, with value type T, with value type T. <laughs> okay. And let me suggest the name for this algorithm because that's the name which Paul and I use. So why don't we use it here? It's called Add to Counter. By the way, for those of you who want to see even more general statements of the problem, it is in Elements of Program. A famous book written by distinguished computer scientists. What? You you heard the story before. Uh, freely available in the corner office. Did you bring the book? After class, you have to do it. Paul needs to sign it. Uh, the pizza is here, guys, or will be done. So let us try at least to write signature. Add your counter. Which arguments do we need to? To have the um, t is counter. So, so they add it to counter. So we have to have an counter there. No, we don't. No, we don't, guys. We don't. This is actually, we don't. I mean, someday somebody will figure out what's the counter. Is it a list? Is it a vector? Is it an array? Is it whatever? We don't want to know. Why? Because we're lazy. For the algorithm, what? Well, it's x, it's whatever you're putting in, the small guy, yes. And then it will be used. So we might as well call it, call it Kerry. And so we, but before we get, guys, how do we, how do we use the counter? We have. Yeah, that's an iterator. Yeah. How many iterators do we need? How many iterators? What is on my tombstone, guys? First and last. Right, it's always first and last. You have to start someplace, you have to end someplace. I mean, you know, you couldn't have any iteration unless you start someplace and end someplace. So let us do that. Do you agree with that? Yeah. Makes sense, right? Just this. Simply speaking, if you don't know what iterators are, just think they're pointers. Okay? Then what do you need to, to pass? I would, again, let's think about how do we order things. Let us name all the things. We, of course, we need the value. How many values do we need? Ah, uh, that's you need one, I need more. <laughs> you need this initial value which you stick in, which we could call X or we could call Kerry. It's a very good name. But I need another value because I'm very lazy, guys. Okay, what's this step? Let us go inside and write the most important thing. What we're going to write, 
We're going to say something. If something is zero, how are you going to say it? It's not just what we should be returning. It's the one we should be checking for here. We need to know what zero is. Do we know now? No, we don't. We have no clue. So if we don't have a clue, let them tell us. They are probably managers. They could decide or whatever. Important people. Clients. Right. We have count. And then the count or, or the present value. What, 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 what? So we need to have two values. Right? And what else do we need to have? We need two iterators. Yes, well, we got two iterators. We don't need any more iterators. You never need. If you need more than two iterators, you're in trouble. So two iterators, if you have only one iterator, you're in trouble. So two iterators is the no good number. What else do you need? Guys, yes, the operation. We need to have an operation. We agreed on that. And I think operation should come in the order before these two, two things of type T. Yes? Let me check. Are we done? Almost. They're almost done. OK, let's do op, o, o. See? And then we need these two guys. And there is a tricky thing there. What's the tricky thing? One is the constant, and another one is what? Another is the need to be combined uh, uh, on two. No, 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 no. We don't need any combined. We just need two, two, two kind of t's, but it's a little trickier. Okay, let's do t first element, uh, no, element one, t element two, and then figure out what what's the name would be. No. We are lazy, so <laughs> so figure out the exact thing. No, okay, so let's write X and Y and then talk about it. Okay. So I claim that one of them, we know the name of the argument. What's the good name for the argument? Zero, spelled Z or Z for those of you from across the pond or actually even to our Indian friends. Uh, or so don't say Z, say zero. Right? Other, other will be the candidate, uh, or to be to, the things to be evaluated. But here, the, this is the important thing. You know, as it will be propagating, it's it functions like a carry. So it might be a good name for him, because that's the guy whom we're going to be modifying and that tells us something that since we need one guy who is going to be modified we want to pass him how no quite opposite we are passing carry by value because we want to have this local copy which we are going to modify as we go along and zero we are not going to modify one hopes, at least not in the algorithm I described, so we could pass it by constant reference. Okay. And then T reference. No, it's not T reference. That's my whole point. You don't want to carry over? I want to carry over. That's why I want to have a value. That's why passing by value is useful. If, if, you know, if I want to have a local accumulator where I'm accumulating the stuff. That's, that's OK. Cool. OK. Do it carry. Carry. Pizza time, guys. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>